Hello and welcome back. Today I have another LCR tweezer and this time it's from the brand uh, Fnirsi. It's the LCR ST1. Uh, it can do three frequencies, 100 hertz, uh, 1K and 10K and it has one main value and two secondary values. It's quite compact. It runs on a rechargeable battery which is great. And uh, well, let's have a close look. The design department uh, from Venerzy did a great job again. The design of the boxes are getting uh, nicer and nicer. And what do we have? Look at this. Very nice. To protect it, great if you use it portable. Let's open it. We have a USB cable to charge and to do firmware updates. Quality control, there is a little metal plate, I'm not sure what it is for. We have spare tips, that's great. These are a little bit bent, these tips. And I think here we have straight ones, yeah. Nice and compact. It is not that heavy. Um, yeah, it pulls a little bit, but you probably keep it reasonable straight and then it doesn't feel that heavy. It looks good. Let's remove the foil. Look, they make a little bit the shape so it doesn't vibrate when you have it in here. Perfect. Okay, well, let's dive into it immediately. Power button. This is a pack or store button I think this is sort of an encoder you can push or left right what we else have here we have the port USB-C very nice I like that I start giving all the equipment USB-C because you, yeah if you put it uh, upside down it still connects because it's a symmetrical connector and the other USB sometimes you just break your equipment we can replace the ones. I like the straight one, so I will leave it as it is. Let's switch it on, huh? like this. We get the choice, Chinese or English. At least I think the first option is Chinese. Uh, I think we can use the encoder here. Yeah, and then push. Yeah, here we have it, okay. My fingers are capacity. Okay, we are in uh, auto mode. Yeah, better like this, I think. Uh, size wise, this is compared to a pen. So it's quite small. Auto mode, we have the voltage. I think it says 0.6 volt. Uh, frequency 1K. Um, if you measure the resistors and the uh, Caps, I saw already in the manual. Usually if you leave it to 1K, you can uh, catch most of it. <laughs> because here, the only if you go very small, you need to put more frequency. But usually, even if you look at the accuracies, usually when you keep it to 1K, you're good. So we can just leave it in that. Um, we have in the bottom here the RS and the dissipation factor as well. If we go to the menu, uh, resistor mode, capacitor mode, coils, D, no diet, and auto. How do we go to the menu? Uh, now we are in the voltage. We can do a lower voltage, no, 0.6 is the highest, 0.3, we push again, come into the frequency, 1k, 10k or 100 hertz, long push, the back button is actually the menu button, then we probably can scroll through the, this is the volume, it's good enough, backlight was good enough, auto off, now auto off, uh, restore defaults and about we are running version 
1.3. I think there is an update, so I will load first the update. I will show that in the end of the video how you can do the firmware upgrade. But the tests I'm going to do now will be with the last firmware update. And that's it in the menu. Escape to go out. Let's do some testing. Switch it on using the defaults 0.6 volt, 1 kilohertz. And we shorted 5, 6 milliohm, so that is very low. Could be correct if you want to zero, that is possible. But if these values are so low, it should not be. But if you do a short push, it should zero. But it actually becomes more, which is weird because it was close to zero. Okay, switch it on and off again. And now it's again close to zero, which is good. Let's do some resistors test. This is, by the way, the DMM uh, check plus revision 8. I have a video about this if you are interested in it. I have also discount codes. Uh, but let's do some measuring here. This should be 100 ohms. Well, we are very close. 1K, look at that, 10K, and 100K. And when we zoom in, we can also see the secondary values. We see the RS and the D, and I think you can change it by long pushing also the top button. It will change. Now we see also the Q. Now we see the Z, the impedance, the X, and the D. This was the default. Some caps. We start with 1 nano. There is 677 picos. This is 10. One hundred. And one micro. And it's all in auto mode. Same for the coils. Let me see. This should be one micro. Ah, we need to switch it over because it thinks it's a resistor. Yeah, one micro is good. This should be 10. Okay, we have the results right here. Here is what we were measuring. This is the calibrated value of the DMM check plus. This is what we measured on 1K. And this is the accuracy that was specified. So that is mostly 0.5% with three digits. Uh, here I needed to measure with 100 hertz because otherwise it was way too much. And um, here we still have a little bit too high, but uh, I didn't do the three digits yet. So if we do the three digits, let's say this becomes a 19, then yeah, we are within the half. If we do that here, then it becomes a one. Yes, just about. So that's okay then. And here we have a big difference. And here I cannot do the three digits because then no, it, uh, we don't get it here. This one is just out of spec. Uh, here we can do a little bit by doing putting the last digit to a four, two percent, still not. So this one is not good, or I wrote it down wrong that it should be two percent plus three digits. I don't think so. At 1K, it was even worse. 
and here we can do maybe a little bit by making this a tree and then we are absolutely within and at 1k it was so the 100 micro Henry is out of spec that's a pity I need to correct that it is within specifications um, I tried now not only 10k but I also tried with 0 0.3 volt and then I'm around uh, 106.4 if I remember correct and then we can add this uh, three last digits and then we are on 0 0.47 which is within this 0.5 percent here is a little bit debatable if it's good or not because this two percent we are clearly not within the two percent but we can add three digits but we didn't have too much digits here if it is anywhere between 0 0.0 and 1.3 we would be okay so in that sense we are within but it is I don't think it's fair because they should have added here also more digits and then we could have seen better okay let's uh, quickly do the firmware update we are on the website of uh, Finergy and then we go to uh, downloads manuals and software and we can type here the device or we just scroll down and here we have the firmware 1.5 so let's download that it's there in the download folder open it in the folder and just extract the files okay that one is open before we connect it to the PC, we need to push this one here and the power button and then it says bootloader, okay. Now it is in firmware mode. So now we can connect it to the PC. Put the plug in here, connect it in the PC. I will connect it in the PC. Now it should open a drive. There it goes. Here we have the folder. There is a text file in there. It's empty. Probably it exports the data in here because that is what it can do. And we just uh, copy this one here. Copy to the into the drive. when we switch it on we should see now the new version uh, long push here I think and then we just about yes it's running 1.5 so that worked the data export we just switch on the device we see here a CSV file let me open this just with notepad it's a lot faster than excel and i see only one value recorded it says it will automatically record but i don't know exactly when because i did a lot of measurements and i think i only see the last one but the data export seems to work but i just don't know how i only saw one value stored um, it says it automatically records but I don't know how and when uh, I did do a firmware update from 1.3 to 1.5 so maybe the manual is already changed and I need to do it in a different way and maybe on the website I can find the information but in this manual I didn't find it but it seems to work when you use it in auto mode it is uh, reasonably good most uh, values i could just uh, measure but if you want it to be within this 0.5 percent of accuracy you need to know already what value you are going to measure so you know okay maybe i need to change the frequency or maybe i need to change the voltage somehow i didn't feel that uh, trouble free as, as the soji I had I don't remember there I needed to change the voltage the frequency I just left it there in auto mode and it was immediately within uh, specs 
once you set the correct frequency and the correct voltage, it was really uh, 0.47 and sometimes even a lower. So it was really within this uh, half percent. So that is very nice. I didn't do a diet test. I forgot. I lost my diet. Of course, I have more, but it, it should be here somewhere. And I didn't do big capacitors. My big capacitors are, I, I bought this uh, mix of capacitors in China and the values are not good. So I cannot do really proper measurements with that. Maybe to compare to the other one. But I think with the DMM Check Plus, we could see all the small values. And I think we have a great idea. Firmware update worked quite easy, I must say. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.